Many of us, as children, played with sunlight. Holding a mirror at just the right angle, we could shine bright rays of light wherever we wished. The ability to control sunlight is not only a fun game for children, but also a desire for everyday life. In a classroom, when the teacher is writing on the board, having enough light is essential to supporting a student's vision. On a cloudy day, opening all curtains to bring in as much light as possible may be an effective strategy. But on a rainy day, natural lighting alone may not be enough, so extra electrical lighting will be needed. On the other hand, when a teacher is showing a PowerPoint or when you are working on a computer, drawing the curtains and shutting off the lights may be needed to prevent glare. These actions are all controlling the lighting level needed for different activities and conditions. According to the Energy Information Administration, lighting was the main source of energy consumption in commercial buildings in both 2010 and 2011. It's reported that office buildings and schools use 40% of their energy for lighting, yet a majority of time spent in the buildings is during the day. Designing for how day lighting is used can lead to effective savings of electricity costs. So let's look at how we can use day lighting and enhance our interior spaces. Visible light is part of the solar ray spectrum. It travels from the sun to the earth together with other solar rays. What we call day lighting is the concept of making appropriate use of the visible solar rays around a building, including direct, diffused, and reflected sunlight, and saving energy costs through design. Let's do an experiment to see how interior light is affected in different conditions. Here we have a box with three windows cut into it. One side window is at a lower level, and one side window at a higher level, and we have one skylight window. Our first experiment is using a brown box and comparing the light level with a white box. While the outside lighting level is the same, the white box reflects more of the sunlight, allowing for a brighter area than the brown box. This means a brighter color can reflect more light and create brighter day lighting. Now, let's compare how each window in the box allows for different levels of light. We'll cover two of the three windows and compare the interior lighting effect with only one remaining window open. First, We'll cover the skylight and the high-level window. The edge of the floor under the window and the ceiling above the window is the darkest area in the box. The second darkest is the opposite corner from the window, followed then by the upper level of the box. The brightest area is where the direct sunlight projects, which reflects light up the middle of the box. Next, we cover the skylight and the lower side window. Generally, the upper level of the box is lighter and the bottom part of the box is darker, but the light falls further into the box. Now, let's compare this to the open lower window experiment. The open lower window has a stronger contrast of light to dark than the open higher window. Finally, we cover both of the side windows and leave the skylight open. The skylight brings in the most even lighting result among the three windows. The brightest level is lower than the result of the lower side window experiment. The dark corner is also minimized in this case. From the comparison, you can see that a skylight is the best way to get in diffused and soft sunlight to create an even lighted interior. Unfortunately, this kind of opening also lets in a lot of heat in the summer when the sun is high. For our final experiment, we will add a small panel to the lower window. This small panel reflects more light into the box, allowing for the dark corner to lighten. If we compare this to the open lower window without the panel, we can see the panel does add more light to the box. 
Adding reflective panels is a good way to improve your lighting efficiency. Drawing out the path of direct sunlight and its reflection is fairly easy, but charting the path of diffused light is more difficult. As we demonstrated, different paints on a surface can bring in different results. In fact, every object diffuses some light, even if it's a mirror. To get the most diffused sunlight, architects favor the use of clerestory windows on the north facade. North-facing clerestory windows serve to admit diffused sunlight without having the harsh direct sunlight of the skylight, which also brings in the heat. We have discussed the power of solar radiation and heat transfer in heating and cooling homes and how we can control that power. We also discussed how a home's ventilation can affect our environment and our bodies. And finally, we know the importance of controlling daylighting and how the sun's rays can be used to light an interior environment. Now, we understand how the energy of the sun plays a vital role in our everyday life.